I want to tell you stories about you and about everyone around you. What they're doing right now. How their day went. What they think about. What they look forward to tomorrow. And the next day. And the next. Their dreams. Daydreams. All of these sleepy bedtime routines. So varied. So unique to each and every person. Jeff lives close by. He's an archivist and spends his day sorting, filing, organizing corporate stories to reference later. His night lit by the soft, dim hum of his sound machine set to ocean waves and his AC gently humming to a very steady, very low buzz. The white linens softly tussled a little on the bed, cotton, cool, crisp. He steps off his slippers and into the bed, softly closing his eyes, kissing his smiling girlfriend before snoozing off, snuggled in soft layers of white. And across the street, Emily lives in an apartment on the top floor of a very tall building. It scrapes the foggy night sky, vanishing into the clouds without a trace. Emily washes her face, a soapy, foamy, thin layer gliding over her cheeks. And as she rinses it off, slowly, this last part of her day is very much her favorite. A moment to pamper and caress. Then she gently smooths moisturizer over her skin, starting on her forehead, then her left cheek, then the right, in big, generous circles. And her temples. She exhales deeply, emptying her lungs, before inhaling and yawning. Her eyelids so sleepy, as she thinks about the tea she'll order for breakfast. Jasmine tea with lavender. She heads to bed in her silk pajamas, bunny slippers, and shuts off the light. In bed, in pitch dark, she begins to relax, while her eyes slowly adjust and start to see some of the soft outlines in the room. The shape of her ceiling fan, a piece of art on the wall, a trace of the doorway. Sleepy, sleepy. She dozes off and starts to dream, thinking about all these shapes she's so acquainted with in the daytime, but now become anonymous silhouettes in the dark. A few lit windows down and over. Lily leans over her little pup Lilac's bed and kisses his forehead, whispering good night, good night, good night. And then heads to bed, switching off each of the lights on the way to her bedroom. The kitchen overhead, each of the six living room candles the two hallway sconces, and finally, her bedroom night lamp. Click, it's off, and she burrows in. 
her dog Frankie, also so cozy across the apartment, already dreaming of squirrels. She smiles, looking forward to tomorrow, her warm cheek against the cool pillow. Takes a deep breath, closes her eyes, and dozes off. A few floors down, on the ground floor, John reads the last few pages of Flowers for Algernon, tearing up a little with his husband next to him. They embrace sweetly, appreciating each other, the life they share. Through sleepy lids, they smile. John is a flight attendant. After miles and miles of gliding through the sky in a huge winged machine, the only place he wants to be is here. Warm, a bit tearful, in Paul's arms. They move their heavy, drowsy arms, reaching for each other and then reaching for their bedside tables, switching off their lights, listening in the dark to each other's breath before falling asleep and dreaming of each other. A few streets over, in an old brick row home, Cecil snacks on the last bit of a snickerdoodle cookie while finishing up her manuscript, only the last few pages left. A tall, skinny candle with a delicate flame burns next to her, lighting the room with a soft glow. Her eyes tired, she finishes the cookie and types the last word in the manuscript, and a period to close it off. Proud, happy, sleepy, she blows out the cinnamon candle and walks up through the house to her bed. Almost every step met with a creak, reminding her that the house is alive, there with her. In her nighting gown, she slips into bed thinking of the next ghost story she'll write. Outside of town, where the buildings aren't tall, but the grass is, Danny closes out her day by washing brushes under cool water. Today, she prepared five canvases and drew lines on one of them with pencils that now sit on the table in the far corner of the room. The canvases neatly propped against the wall, ready for layers and layers of paint, shapes, lines, blocks of color, squares, forms that eventually lose all meaning. She starts to sweep the dark wooden floor, gently, like she does every night. Each bristle bending and smoothing past the natural surface. The brushes, damp, lying snugly on a white towel, will be dry by the morning. Good night, Danny. Good night brushes, and across the house, upstairs, Max folds the last sock from laundry, with their face glowing from the TV screen, and their eyes tired, ready for rest. We can almost make out the show they're watching, from the reflected light, maybe it's Daria. Maybe Sabrina, the teenage witch. Daisy, 
the precious black cat greets Max with a meow, looking up and lands on their lap. A mini panther, delicate, small, vibrant like a daisy, in a spring field. Max kisses her head and they lie back, sleeping, snuggling, the TV still playing, softly in front of the room. Danny makes her way up the steps, changes into a fun, striped set of velvety pajamas, clicks off the light, turns off the TV, and snuggles with the two little souls that make life so much happier. Danny's peachy smooth thigh against Max's knee, Daisy's furry neck against Max's arm, and they all sleep, every soul of this sleepy town, with Zeds floating off, escaping from the windows of each room. Every one Zed rising, slowly, as if full of helium, up and up towards the infinite sky, and joining together as if at a sleepy Z convention. I hope you're so sleepy, and your Zed's up there mingling too. This video was at the behest of my wonderful patron, Dark and Twisted. So if you enjoyed it, say thank you to her, I suppose. <laughs>